United States are leaving. That was announced yesterday. We are leaving alongside them. Uh, and that leaves a, as you say, a very, very big problem on the ground. I'm absolutely worried that failed states uh, breed uh, are breeding grounds for those type of people. Of course I'm worried. It's why I said, you know, I felt this was not the right time or decision uh, to make because, of course, uh, Al-Qaeda will probably come back. Uh, certainly would, would like that type of breeding ground. That is what we see. Failed states around the world lead to instability, uh, lead to a security a threat to us and our interests. A country led by warlords and led by different provinces and tribes, and you end up, if you're not very careful, in a civil war. And I think we are heading towards a civil war, uh, initially shown by a, a, a Taliban with momentum. The Taliban is not entirely a single uh, entity. They, they break down underneath the, the title into all sorts of different interests. But fundamentally, I, you know, as I've said earlier, I have concern that when states become failed states or warlike states, uh, as as it's looking like at the moment in Afghanistan, the breeding ground for both poverty, and we shouldn't forget that, both poverty and indeed terrorism grows. And it's why security is the most important thing. Uh, the president has ordered the reduction of civilian personnel uh, uh, at our embassy in Kabul. The United States on Thursday urged U.S. citizens to leave Afghanistan immediately and said it was significantly reducing staff at its embassy in Kabul as Taliban fighters continued their rapid advance across the country. Pentagon spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. was also sending 3,000 additional troops to Afghanistan in the next 24 to 48 hours to assist at the airport. So are you concerned they're going to be under attack? As in all cases, our commanders will have the right of self-defense, and any attack uh, upon our forces will be met with um, a, a swift and appropriate response. News of the embassy drawdown, first reported by Reuters, is one of the most worrying signs for the Biden administration about the security situation and the failure of the Afghan government to protect key cities. On Thursday, the country's second and third largest cities were on the verge of being captured by the Taliban. On the same day, the militant group also established a foothold in the strategic city of Ghazni, some 90 miles away from Kabul. Uh, this is not abandonment. This is not an evacuation. State Department spokesman Ned Price on Thursday insisted that the embassy in Kabul remains open, but that staff would shrink to a, quote, core diplomatic presence. This is about uh, doing all we can to ensure the safety and security of our personnel as we reduce the size of our civilian footprint in Kabul. Earlier, a notice on the embassy's website urged U.S. citizens to leave the country immediately using available commercial flight options, citing the deteriorating security conditions. Meanwhile, the U.S. military mission in Afghanistan is set to end on August 31st, and roughly 650 troops are currently in the country to protect the airport and embassy. A U.S. intelligence assessment this week said the Taliban could isolate Kabul within 30 days and take it over in 90.